Before you run any kind of operation, there's one thing you have to do first, recon. Think of it like this. Before you run any plays in a game, you need to study your opponent. You want to know their weaknesses, understand their environment, and plan around that. In this video, we're going to look at recon and scanning, but not from the usual penetration testing angle. This is more from a red team perspective, and it's meant to add on to your current scanning methods, not replace them. So let's keep that tradition going and dig deeper into the recon phase, this time through a red team lens. One of the very first things a red team sets up for a client is monitoring scripts. These are usually quick, lightweight bash scripts, nothing fancy, but extremely effective. They scan the network daily and send us alerts when something changes. But before we go any further, let me make one thing very clear. But don't forget this, always have permission before scanning. No exceptions, that's rule number one. Okay, for smaller networks, we like to keep it simple. We create a bash script that uses Nmap to scan the client's network every day and saves the results as XML files. Here's the smart part. To spot changes, we use a tool called NDIF. It compares yesterday's scan to today's and shows us exactly what's different, like new open ports or closed services. The script saves these differences to a text file and, if there's anything new, sends an email alert straight to the team. This way, we never miss a change and can react fast. It's basic but powerful. You get daily visibility without lifting a finger. And the best part? Once it's running, you can build on it, add notifications, dashboards, even automate follow-up scans. And hey, if you run into problems setting this up, don't worry, I got you. I'll help you fix it and make sure you're up and running. Promise. Aside from ports, we also want to monitor web applications, especially when we're dealing with large internal or external networks. There are two tools we like to use for this. The first one is HTTP Screenshot. This tool is awesome. It uses MassCan to scan huge networks fast and PhantomJS to take screenshots of any websites it finds. It gives you a quick visual overview of the network's web surfaces. And the second is Eyewitness. This one's also solid. It takes Nmap output, usually in XML, and grabs screenshots from web pages, RDP, and VNC servers. Super handy for recon visuals. Now let's talk about something a lot of red teamers ignore or underestimate, cloud environments. More and more companies are migrating to cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And that opens up a ton of new attack surfaces, usually because of misconfigurations or just not knowing what's publicly exposed. But here's the challenge. Cloud networks often use dynamic IPs and those IPs change constantly. They aren't neatly listed in a block you can just scan. Take AWS, for example. It owns massive IP ranges worldwide. When you launch a server, it can land anywhere in a big 13 block depending on the region. So how do you even begin to monitor or find these cloud assets? First step is to figure out the IP ranges owned by the cloud providers. For example, if you want to find the IP ranges used by Amazon, you can get them directly from their official website. Don't worry, I'll drop all the links I mention in this video down in the description so you can check them out later. Here's the one for Azure, and this one is for Google Cloud. As you can see, these ranges are huge. Scanning them manually would be painful. But don't worry, throughout this video, I'm going to walk you through smarter ways to gather cloud intel and monitor these environments effectively. All right, let's talk about network and service search engines. Basically, how we can dig up information about cloud servers without ever touching the target directly. You'd be surprised how much is just out there, publicly available on the internet. From simple Google searches to third-party scanning engines, there's a gold mine of data we can use in the recon phase. This kind of passive intel lets us discover open services, banners, exposed devices, all without the target knowing we're even looking. So let me show you a few tools red teamers use to get started. First up, we've got Shodan, and this one's really cool. Imagine Google, but instead of searching for websites, you're searching the entire internet for devices, like cameras, routers, servers, and even smart fridges. Yeah, really. Shodan scans the internet 
It looks at open ports, software versions, banners, and even known vulnerabilities like Heartbleed. Basically, it shows you what's out there and what's exposed. Now for red teamers like us, we use Shodan to gather info about our targets. Stuff like what services they're running, what kind of tech they use, or what might be open to the world. Now one thing to keep in mind, Shodan doesn't always update instantly. Sometimes it takes a few days or even weeks for new stuff to show up. But for passive recon, it's an awesome tool. And the best part is, the target has no idea you're looking. Seriously, it's like digital spying, but legally. Now here's where things get fun, and a little dirty. A lot of companies out there don't even realize what they've got exposed online. Especially now that cloud usage has exploded, and not everyone's locking things down with proper ACLs. You'd be surprised how many Redis servers, Jenkins dashboards, Tomcat managers, and NoSQL databases are sitting wide open, just waiting to be found. So here's a technique. We grab IP ranges from cloud providers like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, and we regularly scan those IPs for SSL certificates. Why? Because SSL certs often leak a ton of internal intel, host names like .dev or VPN, and those can give us internal structure even if we don't have direct access. To automate that, we use a tool called SSL Scrape, and it goes to work. Scans huge IP ranges with mass scan, finds services on port 443, extracts and dumps all the SSL host names. Now this is just a starting point. If you're serious about this, I'd suggest expanding the tool. Save all the host names to a database, build a front-end UI, scan other ports like 8443, and maybe even plug in some vuln detection. You'd be surprised how far this kind of passive recon can take you before even touching a live target. All right, we've scanned ports, mapped networks, checked out web apps. Now it's time to talk about one of the most powerful recon tactics red teamers use, subdomain discovery. Why does this matter so much? Because subdomains often hold the good stuff. Think of things like dev, a development server, VPN entry point, and mail, mail server. These aren't always listed anywhere public. You have to find them. So let's start from the top with finding IP ranges and domain ownership. If we're trying to identify IP ranges tied to a company, there are regional registries we can search, all publicly available. These let us look up organizations, IP ranges, ASN numbers, great for tying digital assets to a company. And if you want to know who owns a domain or host name, tools like Domain Dossier give a quick breakdown of DNS info, registrant details, mail servers, and more. But here's the catch. Subdomains aren't registered anywhere public. They live on the target's DNS servers, so unless you ask the right question, you'll never find them. Why subdomains matter? Subdomains give you three major advantages. They reveal what kind of server it is. Names like staging, API, login, or test can tell you what's running before you ever scan a port. Some servers don't respond to IP. Especially in cloud environments, they need the full domain name to respond. Without the subdomain, your MMAP scan won't show anything useful. The last is, they help map out infrastructure. Once you collect subdomains, you can reverse resolve them and see where the company is hosting, maybe AWS, Azure, or some random data center. Let's break down the tools you'll want in your Red Team toolbox. The first one is Discover Scripts. This one's an old favorite. It bundles together tons of recon tools in Kali Linux and automates the whole process. It pulls data from Arin, Recon, Goofile, Gohost, Googmail, the Harvester, Recon, and a bunch more. One of the cool things it does, let's say it finds an email in a PGP key server. It can then use that to check, check, have I been pwned, giving you a peek into password leaks related to the target. Next up, NockPy, a Python-based subdomain brute forcer. You feed it a domain and a word list. It checks which subdomains resolve. It's only as good as your word list. If the company uses weird internal names, you might miss them. Then we have Sublister. It scrapes search engines using Google dork-style queries to find subdomains that have been indexed. This often finds stuff brute forcing completely misses. 
use it against bug bounty targets, and compare the results, you'll be surprised what turns up. Because it uses search engine scraping, it can sometimes trigger CAPTCHAs or rate limiting. The other tool is Subbrute. Subbrute is all about speed and stealth. It uses public DNS resolvers as proxies, which helps avoid detection and rate limits. Even better, combine it with mass DNS to turn it into a DNS resolution powerhouse. It's fast and it's accurate. Now, let's talk about GitHub Recon. This one catches a lot of people off guard. GitHub is a recon goldmine. You'd be shocked how many times we've found passwords, API keys, internal IPs, or full config files just sitting in public repos. Why? Because developers mess up, they push to the wrong repo, or they try to delete sensitive files after committing them. But GitHub tracks every single change, and those secrets don't actually disappear. Try this Google dork. Cite github.com, then website, Look for public repos, commits, or forks related to your target. Now let's take GitHub Recon to the next level. Trufflehog scans Git repos for high entropy secrets, like API keys or passwords. Git all secrets can clone entire orgs, scan them with Trufflehog, and even combine with repo supervisor. To use Git all secrets, you'll need a free GitHub token. Just go to your settings, generate one, and you're ready to roll. Now for one of the most overlooked vulnerabilities, subdomain takeovers. Here's how it works. Let's say a company points dev.joe.com to a third-party service, like an AWS S3 bucket. Later, they delete the bucket, but forget to remove the CNAME pointing to it. Guess what? An attacker can now register a bucket with the same name and take over that subdomain. To find these vulnerabilities, use TKO subs, hostile sub brute forcer, and auto sub takeover. These tools scan your subdomain list and check if any of them point to abandoned services and are vulnerable to takeover. Finally, let's touch on a critical part of recon, employee emails. You want names, you want formats, you want targets. Finding emails for social engineering is start with discover scripts to pull emails from public sources. Then, Hop over to LinkedIn to figure out how the company formats its emails. Is it first name dot last name at website name? Once you crack the pattern, you can generate more addresses and build a list for future use, phishing, payload delivery, impersonation, you name it. Subdomain discovery isn't just a checkbox, it's a huge part of the recon phase. Done right, it gives you access, visibility, and insight into systems your target forgot even existed. We're talking entry points, forgotten infrastructure, sensitive services, exposed credentials, and full-blown compromise paths. So dig deep, use every tool you can, automate, and most importantly, think like an attacker. All right, so in this video, we walked through a whole range of reconnaissance tactics and tools, everything from passive scanning to subdomain discovery and even cloud recon. But here's the thing, this is just the beginning. A lot of what we covered is manual. It takes time, effort, and patience. But that's the nature of real recon. Now it's your turn to take it further. Start automating. Start scripting. Build your own recon pipeline. Because the faster and more efficient your recon is, the more time you'll have to actually exploit what you find. One life, one shot, make it count.